Looking for something? Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. I'm looking for all the parts of Solar Impulse that were developed by Solvay. Apparently, there's a ton of them. But what's so special about them? Well, I've been told they're very lightweight. That's how we managed to build a plane that weighs the same as a family car. Hmm. Let's see what we can find in here. I found the screw. The screws were manufactured using high-strength, lightweight composite materials. This is also the case of other parts of the aircraft, like the fastenings and the pneumatic cylinders, to lower and raise the landing gear, which are the first plastic cylinders in the history of aviation. And what are you doing now? Take a look at the plane's fuselage. The spars are made of carbon fiber tubes built with a B-nest structure instead of solid carbon. This has reduced the weight of a layer of carbon material from 80 grams per square meter to 25 grams per square meter, which is three times lighter than paper. And to make them light but strong, they were reinforced using a polymer developed by Solvay, sandwiched between two layers of carbon fiber film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I understand. Hey, just got an anonymous tip. Maybe we should look at the cockpit. Well, it seems to me that the fittings on the cockpit equipment housing are made of highly complex components produced by Solvay's new 3D laser printing technique. They are 78% lighter than aluminium, which is why it was an interesting solution for SI2. But they could also be used on a much larger scale, saving tons of fuel each year. Okay, Miss Detective, but I'm sure you don't know about this. Solvay also came up with an innovative binder to improve the chemical stability of the plane's batteries. It increases the number of charge and discharge cycles they can withstand and to store more energy without increasing the weight of the system. Actually, I found that out an hour ago. I also discovered that Solvay added a lubricant to SI2's motors to decrease the friction that takes place inside. Their efficiency has thus soared to 97% compared to 30% for normal thermal motors. Imagine, Natalie, the amount of energy that could be saved if all the motors across the world had this kind of efficiency. How did you find that out? Elementary, my dear Natalie. But no time to explain it now. I've got another case to solve. 